Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to a pick a card reading for Saturn in Aquarius. Uh, you guys can go ahead and jump straight to your reading or you can listen to me talk about Saturn for a few minutes. I don't know about you guys, but I am really happy to kiss Saturn goodbye. <laughs> My Saturn is in Capricorn along with a bunch of other placements. So obviously I just went through my Saturn return and I have been feeling excited to see Saturn move on into Aquarius because I feel like it was going to just really take the pressure off me and I'll just be able to sit back and enjoy my life for a little bit. And let me tell you, I think it was last Saturday when Saturn did finally move into Aquarius. Uh, I'd kind of forgotten about it because I wasn't really thinking too much about, you know, what the planets were doing when in the middle of all of this stuff. So I was just sitting around having a fantastic day. I was like, wow, I'm having one of the best days ever, even though I'm stuck in my apartment and I was by myself. Um, but I was just feeling like light as a feather, like literally despite everything that's going on, I was just having, I don't even know how to describe it. Like I was like dancing in my kitchen, drinking beer, like, you know, dancing with my chihuahua, just like literally just feeling totally exuberant and free. <laughs> And I, you know, so eventually I sat down, I was like, well, this is a little weird. Why is my day going so fantastic? Why do I feel so, uh, so light and so free? And then I remembered that that was the day that Saturn had finally moved on out, moved on into Aquarius. So really this, this, this whole transit for the next like three years is going to be so different, really depending on what, what Saturn is doing for you. If you're like me and you have Saturn at like early on in Capricorn, I think you're going to be doing amazing. I think these next couple of years are going to be the best you've had in a long time, maybe even ever. And of course, if you have your Saturn kind of at the end of Capricorn uh, or obviously anywhere in Aquarius, you are in the middle of feeling the effects of Saturn and you guys are going to have to put your nose to the grindstone. I'm also noticing people who have uh, Saturn is, if they're having any kind of transit where Saturn is squaring either their natal Saturn or their sun, uh, they're having a little bit of a unpleasant time right now as well. So I decided to do this pick a card reading to see how Saturn might be affecting you. The only other thing I'd like to add is for me, I can't talk about Saturn and Saturn Returns without thinking about the Tool song called The Grudge. Tool fans, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't heard that song before and you're either going through your Saturn return or just interested in learning about what that's like, go listen to The Grudge. And if you don't like that kind of music, just read the lyrics because it's still a really good poem. And you, I think you could, you know, read everything you can find on the internet about Saturn Returns, but in my opinion, that song sums up the struggle of the Saturn return perfectly. And like, that's, that's all you need to know. Uh, all my life growing up, I had known that that song was like important and it was really compelling to me. And then when I was going through my Saturn return, it finally, like I understood it on like a really visceral level. It was like the song had like sunk into my cells. And I was like, yes, like I always knew what it meant on an intellectual level, but to actually live that out, to like live out Saturn coming back around and lifting you up again, it's something else entirely. So go read the lyrics to that song. It's good. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. For you guys, the Saturn in Aquarius era is going to involve an ego death experience, but that might sound scary, but it's going to be good. It's going to be really good for you guys. Um, you've got this eight of swords over here, which as you can see, this, this crow is kind of trapped in around. He's trapped by like mental constructs. That's what these swords symbolize to me, uh, ideas, thought patterns, and he's all tangled up and it's a bit of a mess. And eight of swords is always kind of self entrapment or really there being a way out, but not seeing it definitely you need to like release something and release something inside of yourself in order to pick yourself up and move on. And okay, over here, the sun and this 10 of swords, because I, I typically see the 10 of swords. I mean, it's always like some kind of definite ending. Something is ending. 
I typically see it as an ego death experience. And with it sitting here next to the sun, with the, the Ten of Swords being the central experience here, it's an ego death because the sun can re represents your conscious mind and to a certain extent your ego. So what exactly I mean by ego death, that can be, you could, you might, some of you will have a very like literal ego death experience, which you can experience that in meditation or taking some kind of drugs. But it's basically when your sense of self, like your awareness of yourself as a, as an individual being like dissolves. There's different ways you can experience it. Well, some people just f have this like visceral feeling of everything is one, like actual, actually experiencing yourself and the universe and everybody, everything else in it as like one thing. And people can feel that on a really, really like literal level. If you get into the right kind of altered state, uh, other people feel that, um, sense of like unconditional, pure love for everybody, for everything. And other people experience it as like if you're meditating, sometimes you can get into a state where you realize that you have no head and you're just like an awareness, like a, a field of awareness. Personally, I had an ego death experience when I was on salvia. If you don't know about salvia, it's a very interesting drug. It's legal here um, where I am. So I took it totally legally. I bought it at a store. <laughs> and I mean, it's easy to you feel free to write this off as, you know, a drug induced experience. But to me, it was it was really real. This was the most real experience of my life. I essentially, like, I went back to source. I, like, ascended right up. I, I met my sisters. I met the divine mother and father. I was like, hey, guys, I did it. I'm back. It was really cool. I was being this girl named Shy, you know, and she had a chihuahua and lived in this apartment. Um, and the only thing I remembered about all of my life uh, like I had forgotten, not only did I forgot that I forget that I ever took drugs, not only did I forget literally everything about my life, um, I, I was just this like ecstatic point of consciousness. And I was like so, so happy to be seeing, you know, my family again. But a lot like people who have near death experiences, I remembered my, my, my family, my human family. I remembered my husband and my dog. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I love them so much. I have to, I have to get back to them. I have to get back. That was literally all I took with me. That was all I took with me when, when my ego died and I left my, like I left my body and I went back up to source. All I remembered about my life was my name, um, that I was blonde. Uh, I don't know why that was significant <laughs> and that I had this husband and this dog that I desperately had to get back to. So the gravity of love like pulled me back down and that was a really significant experience for me because it like tuned me in to the like essential frequency of my soul. It really made me realize that everything I'm experiencing here, all of my thoughts, all of my feelings, none of that is really important because it's just passing in the wind and the essence of my consciousness that travels, you know, the cosmos is is like this ecstatic frequency of love. So that, that was my personal experience with ego death. E ego death can manifest in a lot of different ways. Um, and it actually depends on like what kind of, I mean, you could think about it as experiencing ego death, depending on what chakra you're experiencing it through, like a heart chakra ego death would be that experience of having unconditional love for everyone in the universe. I don't know how it's going to manifest for you guys, but it is definitely on its way. And it's, this is good. It's good for you. It's good for you. Yeah. Even if, uh, sometimes the universe tries to force you into these experiences and that's when you're getting lots and lots of blocks. You're being blocked everywhere you go. You're being frustrated. You're being thwarted. It's because you, you the universe is trying to make you let go of something. You need to let go of something to get out of this trap because the trap is actually constructed inside of your own mind and you got to let it go. Um, you know, a simple example would be you're at work and every, you're just trying to get more hours at work. You're trying to get more hours so that you can have more money and do this job, but nothing you do, you keep getting your hours cut, you keep getting your hours cut and you're just bashing your head against the wall, just brick wall, brick wall, brick wall. And you're always just squeaking by, you're never getting ahead. Well, 
I would say in that situation, the universe is trying to tell you that you got to let that go. You are being invited to take a different path and you might, you might not want to let that go. You might really identify with that job. You might think it's really what you want, but those are just your egoic desires. You gotta, you gotta let it go. You gotta let something go. And it might feel like, you know, part of you is dying. I've actually known people who were going through like a ego death periods, you know, like when the sun is in your 12th house, <laughs> that can really feel like ego death. And I've heard people say, I feel like I'm dying. Like literally saying, I feel like I'm dying. And the, you know, and even when they weren't even really depressed in like a, you know, clinical way, I mean, yeah, they were depressed, but they weren't really clinically depressed, but they felt like they were dying. And I'm sitting there going, you know, their son, the sun is in their 12th house. They don't know it. I can't tell that to them because, you know, most people don't want to hear about astrology, which is cool. I understand that because that was me for the rest of my life. So I never talk to people about astrology that, you know, that I just, you know, randomly know, right? But that it's that feeling of, if you feel like you're dying, it's that feeling of ego death. It's not that you, do, you are dying. It's that your egoic structures are being pulled and peeled away. And you're going to be rebirthed as the fool. It's going to be so good, guys. You're going to have this fresh, fresh new beginning where you just get to do it all over. And you're going to be embarking off on your new journey. And this is going to work out so well for you. There's going to be a clue right away, three of wands, that things are, that your new path is going to be fruitful for you. You're going to see your ships coming in and it'll be really good because you'll be like, wow, you know, I just survived this, this pivot point of my life. I just had this feeling of hitting rock bottom, but right away you're going to start to see things working out for the better. So you just got to get through that, that rock bottom point. And of course here we have this lioness. You have powerful, powerful protection. You can see this onk here. You are being protected while you go through this rock bottom and regeneration process. Also, this card is also reflecting your internal strength. I think you have you have your your lionesses around you. You have your pride around you, but you also you almost don't even need them. They're they're there just as extra support for you because you are also this lioness yourself. And look, that's where you guys are going. Once you confront whatever it is about your conscious mind that is holding you back, let that go. Let go of the constraints of your conscious mind. You guys probably know what that is. You know there's something, there's some kind of algorithm algorithm running through your left brain or being ran by your left brain that's got to go. Once you let that go, you're going to be rebirthed as the fool and you're going to be embodying, you know, the energy of the lioness. You guys just have to get through this, you know, you just got to get, you know, a little bit dead, but this is not literal death. This is just some kind of cycle has to end so that you can move on to greater, greater things. That's basically what I'm seeing here for you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. For you guys, Saturn in Aquarius is going to be about letting go of something to do with your, your physical world, some kind of baggage like about your life, about your world. You have the world card here in the middle, in, like, in the middle of your base, and you have this Jaguar card up here, which is about release. This Jaguar card is a lot like the death card in the tarot about releasing something physically in order to transform. Jaguars are also connected with, you know, communicating with everything beyond the veil, so to speak. So this world card, the serpents eating each other, this is, this is cyclical and that's what you've got going on here. You have to give up something about your world in order to transform your world. Like, I feel like it's this, the spread starts and ends with this card. However things are for you right now, in like three years, by the time Saturn is done being an Aquarius, your life, like physically, is going to be completely different. Something has to go. I think it has something to do with this Hierophant card you've got. 
traditions and structures for some of you, possibly even a religion. It could also be like systems of thought, some kind of hierarchical, patriarchal, masculine structure. And, you know, masculine and structure, those aren't bad things. But I think for you, there is something stale, stagnant and restrictive about some kind of tradition. And you're starting to look at it. I think with this six of wands over here, you're coming from a, like a comfortable place. I think this, this tradition has been really good for you. You've really thrived in it. It's gotten you where you are, but you're really being invited to release it and regenerate it so that you can birth a new world. If anything's been feeling stagnant or if anything's been feeling restrictive, it's got to go. And I think this is something that you can probably like, this isn't like an ego death experience. Like the, this is actually kind of similar energy to the first reading, but that was all about an internal ego death and like transforming your consciousness. This is more like something real. Like, I mean, your consciousness is more real than anything else, but you know what I mean, right? Like something tangible that you can see and touch. Uh, and it's so such a structural vibe here. It's something to do with your your systems, some kind of system has to go. And if this process isn't going to be the easiest on you guys, you got three of swords, two of pentacles together. While you're letting this thing go, it's going to hurt. Like, I mean, you know, I'm sorry to have to, to have to say this, but the three of swords, that's just like, that's heartbreak. That's pain. Something you're saying goodbye to, you don't, you don't want to let it go. You, you do not, and that and it's going to be an unpleasant experience letting that go. But I think you guys probably already have an inkling of what it is. You're probably in the back of your head, you're going, oh yeah, it's that thing, that thing I know I have to look at. I know that that's not good for me. I know that's got to go. Whatever that is, it's that. And you're probably sitting there going, that's, that's impossible. That is impossible to let go of. I can't get rid of that addiction. I can't get rid of that job. I can't get rid of that relationship. I can't get rid of it, rid of that habit. I can't leave my religion. I can't adopt a whole new way of living. It seems impossible, but if you just start taking your baby steps, baby, baby steps, it can be the smallest little incremental steps. Um, you know, the, an example for that would be, I don't think any of you are like fundamentalist Christians because that would be really unlikely for you to be watching this video, but that that's the example. Um, like a biblical literalist having the very first experience of questioning like something that's in the Bible and they go, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Maybe the Bible isn't literally like the literal direct written down word of God. That thing, you know, that's the first step for them, um, you know, in starting to evolve their relationship with their religion. So you guys can take those little itty bitty baby steps. You don't have to do this all at once. And that'll, uh, that'll ease the heartbreak a little bit if you just take it easy. And that will help you, you know, get this ball rolling because you're also got this two of pentacles, meaning you're going to be standing on the shifting sands, almost like see you guys trying to stand. Like imagine if you have two like basketballs and you're trying to stand on them, balance on them. And you're like, Whoa. <laughs> so this is really going to shift your physical reality. I almost see this Jaguar is like a reaper. Once the Jaguar comes and reaps whatever is happening to you, the Jaguar, this Jaguar energy is going to be clearing some shit out. And then I think you're just going to come right back down. You know, you're going to come right back down and then you're going to have your new world. You guys might be actually in your Saturn returns or some kind of Saturn square. This is really, uh, to me, like em embodying the whole Saturn and Aquarius thing. This Saturn is coming into Aqu Aquarius to force everybody to individualize and then to reconnect in a new, completely new, completely like hitherto unknown kind of way, dividing so that we can come together and reweave ourselves stronger. That's what's happening to you guys. Um, I think I'd like to pull some moon cards for you. Nine 
nothing is yet set in stone. Mutable moon. Don't let your past hold you back. South node. Yep. <laughs> this card, major confirmation for me. Don't let your past hold you back. Right. What I was saying of you guys have some kind of structure that has been structure or lifestyle or religion that has been good for you that you've flourished in. But now that's in the past, you got to kind of put that behind you. You got to it's it's self node energy guys it's time to be working towards your north node and this is so much like a saturn return i i think i said this like what yesterday in some other reading i did uh the same card came up and it's yeah when you're going through your saturn return or any like significant saturn transit you're being essentially forced <laughs> it's hard to get around saturn right you're being forced to let go of your past baggage you're being forced to move towards your north node and yeah, nothing, right over here, nothing is set in stone. Put that right on top of the uh, Two of Pentacles. You guys have timelines open to you. How, you. how well you navigate this next few years, how much finesse you use, how much of your discernment you use, how much you choose to lean into your destiny. This is like that idea of the fated life versus the destined life. We think of fate and destiny as being similar, right? But think about it. Fate is a lot more ominous sounding than destiny. You don't want to succumb to fate, right? You don't want to have Saturn like fucking force you and like take his giant cosmic thumb and squish you into the ground. No, <laughs> you do not want to be forced to live your fate. You want to rise up and let yourself flow with open arms into your destiny. If you get yourself aligned and if you align yourself with what is destined for you, so align yourself with your with your destiny. Do not align yourself with your egoic desires. If you can, try to align your, your egoic desires with your destiny. How can you get what you want? Because it's still okay to have to have desires. You still get to have an opinion. Like you're the one down here living this life, right? You still get to have an opinion. And you still get to say what you want. So figure out how you can get what you want while also flowing in the path that the universe wants you to go. That is the real trick. It takes discernment and it takes finesse, but that is how humans, the one, like, you know, those of us down here in our little human bodies, that's how we can compromise with our higher self and with the universal energies, figure out how to get what you want while also flowing in the direction of your destiny. You can have, you can have it both ways. And that is how you will get what you want in a way better way. Right. You might think, oh, I want that job and the, I'm all pissed off at the universe for not letting me have that job. Well, if you let go of that, that idea and just think, OK, well, maybe it's not that job that I want. Maybe I just want my most ideal best job. Hang on to the essence of that and then follow the flow of the universe. And then you will find yourself. It might take longer than you want, but eventually you'll find yourself in your most ideal best career, probably one that you never could have imagined. So trust that the flow if you can align yourself with the flow that you will end up going where you want to go, where you truly want to go, what is actually truly best for you. Your higher self knows what you want better than you do, or it knows how to give you what you want better than you do. So set your goals, but don't get attached to specific outcomes. Just align with the energy of your, of your desire and let the flow take you there. Don't let your past hold you back, guys. Release your baggage, release your past, and manifest a new world. But wait, there's more. I just clicked off your cards and I was putting the, the deck away, and I saw that the bottom of your guys' deck was death. I just didn't look. I was literally just saying that this Jaguar card was just like death. So, there you go. Rise like the Phoenix, Phoenix guys. Get ready to transform, and then you will rise. I think that's all I'm seeing here. Happy Saturn in Aquarius, guys. Hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pal 3. Congratulations. You guys are going to be having an awesome Saturn in Aquarius. 
you guys are not here to have your Saturn return. I would be very surprised if any of you are having your Saturn return. You probably just had it. <laughs> or even if you are going through it, um, you're going to go through it with so much grace and you're going to really reap the benefits of Saturn. Like, he's going to be good for you. Right to start off at the top, you guys got dolphin happiness. Look at that. Look at this lady just having the time of her lime hanging out with the whales, riding the dolphins. Like, I don't know about you guys. I love dolphins. I love whales. I love sea mammals. Like, I would be a dolphin if I could. When I was a kid, me and my sister would uh, use skipping ropes to tie up our legs, and we'd swim around in my grandparents' pool with our legs tied up so that we could swim like dolphins. <laughs> um, that's just... I mean, especially with all these other cards... Such an indication of everything is going to be going well for you. You are cultivating your happiness. Um, where do I want to start here? There's just all the all the good things. Okay. Queen of Wands, King of Wands. You guys have... There's two ways of looking at this. The external relationship between you and another figure. Uh, probably some kind of soul family where you guys are syncing up and entwining in such a beneficial way, and it's going to help you manifest your creative project. But this doesn't need to be an external figure. This is also your internal balance of masculine and feminine energies, and that that was some kind of key for you in order to work on your creative project. You guys, because you got the Eight of Pentacles here, this is working on your career. And with these surrounding energies, I really see it as a creative career. If you've been thinking of dabbling in some kind of, you know, intuitive business or doing your music more seriously, working on your art more seriously, this is such a good spread for that. Like, you got to let your creativity shine. The medium is totally irrelevant here, whatever it is, because, you know, businesses is a creative, create, business is a creative endeavor in and of itself as well. So let your creativity out. It is time that you work on this and this is going to... It's going to bring you happiness, but also since you have cultivated a certain base level of happiness, that is why you're going to be successful this time. You might be thinking, oh, you know, I've tried being in a band before and that failed. I tried selling my art before nobody wanted to buy it. I tried running a business and it tanked. Blah, right? But now is the time because you have, you've come into alignment and you've gotten everything sorted out. You've gotten your shit sorted out so that this time it is way more likely to be successful. I mean, th there's not indications here of it being like, you know, you're not... I'm not saying you're going to make millions of dollars, but if you start this, you can work on it and you can, over the years, really over the whole span of Saturn being in Aquarius, you'll be able to build yourself up so that if you diligently work at this, because, you know, Eight of Pentacles is all about diligently working <laughs> and gaining mastery over some kind of skill, in, especially in a career context, by the time Saturn is moving on into Pisces, you guys could be quitting your day jobs in order to finally pursue your creative business full time. You know, over the next few years, you can, it might start really tiny, you know, but you'll get that first sale or you'll get that first gig. Everything goes baby steps. And then one day you'll realize, wow, I have an actual side income. I've got this side hustle and I love doing it. And it'll bring you so much joy being able to work on this. You'll be able to work on it and be happy. I was just thinking about this this morning going, man, I love making uh, these videos. And of course, I do have a, a shop on Etsy where I do private readings, but I'm just starting there. And, you know, I've only had two sales, which is which is great. But I love making these videos, even though, you know, I don't get paid to make the videos, but I, I do it just because I love it. And I always remember in high school, you know, people always saying, you need to find a career that you love doing. What would you do if you, if you didn't get paid for it? And I was just like, well, there's nothing I wouldn't do. There's nothing I would do if it was, if it was for free, right? I don't work for free. I don't do shit for free. There's like nothing. If I'm not getting paid, I just like sit on my ass and don't do anything. Um, well, funny, it just took me until uh, like all these years to figure out that here's something I really enjoy doing for free. I do this for free and I love it and it makes me happy and I look forward to doing it. And after I make these videos, like my day is better. I'm amped up and it's awesome. And it's like, wow, it really is possible to find uh, like, like a job, like some kind of activity that you like doing for free. 
I never have would have believed that was possible until I got into tarot. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles over here. This is Van mirroring the Queen of Wands. So this is a uh, and next to this Eight of Pentacles. Why I do see this eventually coming into you know providing you with financial income, especially since this is a Saturn in Aquarius video. We're thinking long term. I think that yeah, if you guys can take it easy. Step by step, long term, eventually you will be able to quit your day job. I'm not saying you can quit your day job this year, but I am saying by the end of this year, if you really take this seriously, you can start to see how you'll have a little income from it. And then from there, you can build until eventually you can quit your day job. Also, yeah, Nine of Wands saying that like you're almost there. This is the last stand. So also maybe if you guys have been feeling like you should give up on it, that you should give up on writing that book or that you should just get, you know, let your business closed. That's a symptom of being almost there. This is nine of wands. You're almost at the finish line. You're close guys. Don't give up now. Uh, you know, you might be wounded and feeling a little bit embattled, maybe a little bit PTSD thinking, Oh, you know, what's going to go wrong next. Hang in there. Y you've almost got this. <sighs> Coming back to this dolphin card. Love all this blue, blue water and the air, which this almost like symbolizes Aquarius in and of itself, right? Because it's an air sign, but it's it's so associated with water. I mean, its name is Aquarius and it's considered the water bearer. Yeah, you guys are reaping the, the gifts of Saturn. You guys have been getting your shit together. Like you couldn't have gotten to this place of eight of pentacles with you know, King of Wands, Queen of Wands, and Queen of Pentacles, and happiness, if you hadn't have already gone through, you guys have already been through your dark night, you guys have already been through your pain and your struggle, and you're finally starting to get a footing. Yeah, you you guys have learned Saturn's lessons, and you're probably feeling like me, you're like, fuck off, Saturn, time to get out of Capricorn, goodbye. <laughs> uh, I, I Like, I resonate a lot with, with this reading. As soon as I flipped it up, I was like, oh, because so, sometimes when I do these, I, I realize that some of them are for me, as well as, you know, for everybody resonating with me. We're all on the same frequency. So, yeah, I'm happy to see, guys, that somebody is not going to be under the thumb of Saturn. You are receiving the gifts of Saturn. Okay, moon cards. Um, nope. Other cards. Sorry, guys. I felt really strongly all of a sudden that you guys should get these ones. This is the Starseed Oracle. And just one, apparently. Okay. What do we got here? Star Brothers, Horus Energy, Protection, Loyalty, Safety, Trust. Weird. This is the third time I've pulled this card in 12 hours. So <laughs> um, I, I pulled this card for myself this morning and I pulled it yesterday for somebody else. Protection, Loyalty, Safety, and Trust. Yeah, and it's such masculine energy coming from, from Saturn. As this relates to Saturn what I was just saying about reaping the rewards of Saturn, not being under his thumb. Yes, this is an invitation to know that you are safe, you are protected, that you have, in this case, I mean, it's your star brothers. Your star brothers are out there watching you. They're around you. Trust that everything is going your way, guys. And I like that, you know, this reading was largely about career. And to get this masculine energy from that is a really nice confirmation for me. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. Interestingly, I had to change the backdrop to black here simply because these cards are white. And I flip them up and we have judgment. Somebody is being held accountable. Somebody is being judged. Clearly when the judgment card's up, we all think of judgment day, right? 
Then we've got Truth, Jackal. This is also Anubis. Anubis looks after recently dead souls, takes them to the underworld. After they are judge, judged, he records their fates in the Book of the Dead. So some pretty heavy energies going on here. But I think you guys, whatever reckoning is nigh for you, uh, you don't need to be quaking in your boots. The rest of these cards suggest that you're going to come through this and it's going to be good for you. We've got Queen of Cups, Knight of Wands. I almost want to think, has somebody been like tricking you guys? Has somebody been like... These, it's it's difficult because this energy can be going two ways. Either you guys are being being judged and the reckoning is here to sort you out. Uh, but of course, I don't like to think that my viewers uh, are being held accountable for their misdeeds. <laughs> so perhaps more likely it's that somebody around you, like I almost feel like you could be the Queen of Cups. And the, this Knight of Wands, which I'm not getting a good vibe from this Knight of Wands, has somebody been fucking with you guys? I almost I almost want to think. That could be why this judgment is coming in. Maybe you guys are the judge. Maybe you are Anubis and you are demanding truth and you're going to be writing down what everybody has done in the records. Interestingly, we also have this Four of Pentacles, which is a balancing energy. This is kind of like a Mr. Scrooge. He's sitting around counting his coins, making sure they're all there. Uh, but it, it can also just be somebody trying to make sure that they have enough of something and that their like books are balanced, that everything is budgeted properly. So, and then right next to this, there's the 10 of pentacles. So I think this four of pentacles is actually really beneficial for you. Like you are accounting for something, you are tallying everything up and you're balancing your books. And l happily for you guys, you're going to wind up with the 10 of pentacles, which is just look at these little foxes. They are the happy family. They're the happy family. Ten of Pentacles is abundance. Total, total abundance. So that is so good to see that in here with all of this like jackal judgment and truth uh, thing going on. I'd actually like to pull some more cards for you guys. What else is going on here? Let's get some clues. Eight of Swords. Okay, so you've been blind to something. You've been blind. And I think, like, with the Eight of Swords, typically you've put this blindfold on yourself. And look how it's red. This is such, like, like, you know, red is always... Just think of, like, the Sixth Sense, right? Everybody red, everything red in there is always symbolized with death. So there's something sinister going on. And these, you know, this blindfold has to come off. The moon, again, illusions, not being able to see truth. Having this fucking lobster sneak up on you is going to bite you in the ass. Yeah, there's something you guys aren't aren't seeing, but it's going to be coming to light. Uh, and here we have the magician, again with the red. Infinity, everything's coming back around. I think you guys have had enough of this shit. That's what I think this is. I think there has been something going on in your life. Maybe you've been letting it slide. Maybe you haven't been noticing it. Maybe you didn't want to admit to yourself how bad it was. Maybe you were so compassionate and so empathic that you kept forgiving people. And I think I think you're coming to some kind of maturity with how you deal with people who are screwing with you. Like, I think you're starting to understand that you can 
understand where like acknowledge where people are coming from you can go oh yeah this person did it because such and such and such like you know they're a giant dick and they treat me like shit because you know their parents had a really bad relationship and you know they learned that and you can understand that but you don't need to like tolerate that anymore i think you're learning not to tolerate it you still are compassionate you still understand you still have this understanding for people but you don't have to make excuses for them anymore you can still hold them accountable well feeling for them and well understanding their perspective I think that has been a major shift for you guys. And you're, so you're busting out of these illusions. You've sort of been creating for yourself. You're busting out, you're busting out, you're holding. This is also stemming from holding yourself accountable. I think you guys are realizing that, that you had to like find your voice and you had to learn to hold other people accountable for their actions. And so it's interesting how that goes, right? When we, when we learn something, when we learn to do something for ourselves, we simultaneously learn to do it for others. For me, you know, a lesson I went through when Saturn was in Capricorn was that I had to learn to, when I learned to forgive others, I learned to forgive myself. That goes hand in hand. So for you guys, it's more like you're learning to hold others accountable as well as holding yourself accountable. Like when we when we go through these lessons they're not really complete until they've gone through internal and external they need to go through both sides so there's definitely a thing of accountability you are holding yourself accountable and you're holding everybody else accountable and that is busting you out of all of these these illusions and this entrapment and this feelings of stagnancy and having to balance everything um two more cards i think King of Pentacles. That was with the Ten of Pentacles and the, the Nine of Pentacles had been at the bottom of your deck. So one more. Two of Wands. Look at that. This guy's literally on top of the world because he's managed to put his ideas together. So I really see this working out for you guys uh, in a financial way. It, look, Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles at the bottom of your deck again. So yeah, you guys are putting something together and it's going to manifest physically for you in a very good way. Um, almost makes me think of somebody going through a divorce, like who, somebody who finally held their spouse accountable and he was finally like, okay, like I can't put up with the shit anymore. I'm taking the blindfold off my eyes. I have to realize that I have to get out of this, this marriage. Going through a divorce, you know, breaking through the illusions, holding everybody accountable, actually having like the, you know, the divorce proceedings judged by a judge moving on. And, you know, this person for this theoretical divorce would be really getting what they deserve from the settlement. You know, you guys are going to be getting, you are going to be judged fairly because you have earned it. And because you have gone through this internal process of holding yourself accountable. And that is letting you manifest everything you need you realize that you have everything you need within yourself and now it is going to manifest everything you need outside of yourself you're going to be the king sitting on top of the world guys this might take all the way through saturn and aquarius so i think this is a process you're going to be going through for a while like this is this is like a saturn reading right so this is not going to be quick and it's not necessarily going to be easy but see it through guys see it through you got like the penultimate card of this animal divine spirit animal deck like with this anubis coming up truth 44 like the this this energy you can't dodge it it you know you can't dodge it but it's coming and you're gonna come out okay you're gonna come out more than okay king sitting on top of the world guys <laughs> um and i think that's it i can feel like uh finishing here. So good luck with your Saturn in Aquarius. Hope to see you guys again soon.